Good morning, witches. It has been a while, uh, but I'm here, as promised, on socials where I've been talking about it. And today's video is gonna be a little different from what I've usually done because it is very new territory for me. As like a quick little update, I kinda wanted to intro this by saying uh, a little bit about how my practice has been changing, because it's relevant. This video is not about that on the whole, but I'm planning another one for that broader topic in particular. Uh, but in general, the ways that my practice has been changing influenced what brought this video about. So more recently, I have been doing a lot more with spirit work and ancestor work. And that's specifically because Freya and Hecate told me that they wanna to work together. They're not meant to be like separated entities on my altar space or in my practice as a whole. They specifically said, look, the things that we both do for you and with you are linked, so let's do it together. So they both got new candles at the same time and both of them relate to the dead and to wisdom and to things like that, secrets, magic in general. You know, when I really thought about it, it made a lot of sense. But with that direction of spirit and ancestor work came the problem of, I didn't know anything about my family. By that I mean my family's always been really small. Uh, what I consider to be my family is like six people uh, and it has the complications of like step parenthood and poor relationships with one half of my family and that half of the family being one person. And I, I mean that in the sense of I only have problems with one person, but also I mean they're the only one left alive in their entire family. For the sake of clarity in this video, I'm gonna define specifically how I'm referring to certain people. So I have my father is my biological father, my dad is my stepdad, my mom's my mom, that's easy. Uh, and then I have my grandfather, my mom's biological father, and my grandpa, who is technically my step-grandpa. Uh, and then I only have the one grandmother because my father's parents are both dead and have been since I was four. My family as I know it is me, my brother, my mom, my dad, grandpa, grandma, some uncles and aunts and that's it. <laughs> like it's it's really terribly small and most of our family gatherings are like five, six people. It really doesn't get very big. And uh, my father's side, his parents, like I said, died when I was four. He has a sister who I think is still alive. Uh, and that's it. And beyond that, I didn't really know anything about my great grandparents or anything beyond that. I didn't know anything about our heritage and it just was never very important to us. We never had any like superstitious or spiritual traditions because most of my family are sciencey people and very into like modern education, which is great in a lot of ways. I didn't grow up with religion, which was kind of nice. I didn't have to deal with a lot of religious trauma or anything like that, but I, I just didn't know anything. And so as I'm starting to look into my heritage with ancestors and stuff, I realized I don't know anything about them. All I really knew is that my grandmother says we're Danish. That's it, that's all I got. I didn't know anything about my dad's family. I didn't know anything about my grandfather's family. I, I didn't know anything beyond that. So I started looking into it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna start building a family tree because I wanna know more. Is there anything interesting? Are there people that I should, should be able to, to look at or any traditions that I'll find out about? And so I started using some online resources. There's one that's run by the Mormons that you shouldn't give them your information, but a lot of your family might already be on there. So what I did was I looked at my father's parents. So I, I essentially made an account saying, hi, I am my father. Uh, and I inputted his parents and all of their stuff popped up. So I was able to find all of his side without having to give anything about me. And I did the same for my mom and uh, a fair amount of her family popped up, but there was a little bit of research I had to do with the records and documents they had. And so I started to build her family tree with her father and her mom. And it was actually pretty interesting. So I did confirm that in fact, we are very, very Danish. Um, that line goes, I can trace it to about the 1600s and the most recent people from Denmark came over. It was my great grandfather in 1908. 
Um, and I did actually learn that we have a couple of traditions within my family. They're not really spiritual, religious, superstitious type things, but they're still traditions nonetheless, and that's still part of heritage for me. Um, one of those traditions is actually relating to this bracelet. You guys have probably seen it in a lot of my videos, my pictures, but this bracelet in particular, all of the, the women in my maternal line have had, at least for a couple of generations. So I know my grandma has it, my mom has it, I have it. Hold on. Come on, Gannon, what are you doing? Come here, big man. You'll be with me. Oh, this is Gannon. He's a big boy. So, all the women in my line have it, and, uh, it's just sort of something that connects us all together. It's something sweet and innocent. I never take it off because it's sterling silver. And so I always keep it on me and it's a, a reminder of the part of my family that loves and cares for me and that I have really good memories with, which is nice. I, I kind of like having that. Um, and then the other tradition is that apparently my great grandfather would go back to Denmark every year, couple of years, frequently enough. And he would go back and get this Royal Copenhagen set of plates or something. And so that too is something that's going to be passed down maternally. That is, um, my grandma had it. She passed it down to my mom. And my mom says, uh, when I'm older, it'll get passed down to me. And then when my, my female cousin has children, it'll go to her to then go pass down to her kids. Um, and so like, this isn't anything special. You can still buy the Royal Copenhagen plates now. It's not like they're like, rare collectible things in that sense that they're gone, but it's it's just something kind of cute and nice and a reminder of the Danish side of our family. And, you know, you don't have to be Danish, Swedish, Norwegian to do Norse stuff, but it was a nice confirmation that that was also just further connected to me and made a lot of sense for me. So like, again, you don't have to be, but it was just kind of a, a fun little, ooh, so I already do that stuff. And also I'm Danish and a little bit Norwegian and Swedish, very cool. Okay, bye Gannon. Now on my father's side, that becomes complicated. Um, he's lots of stuff. He is mainly English, a little German, and his stuff spreads out really far um, because, you know, the English actually keep really good track of their records. And he had family come over on the Mayflower. And so that adds that level of, ooh, great. Those people are in my family, yeah. And here's the thing, when you're doing ancestor work, you don't have to work with the shitty ancestors, right? If you know that you had colonizers and slave owners and awful people, my dad's father was a cop, so I don't really want to work with a cop ancestor, just saying, um, you don't have to. Sebastian, do you have to be a bastard all the time? If you're gonna meet a fucking monster, you're at least gonna hang out with me a little bit. So you don't have to work with the ancestors that are bad people. You don't have to work with them and venerate them and honor them. In Frankie's video, which I'm gonna link, oh, I haven't done this in forever, here, uh, they talk about how part of their ancestor work for that is essentially not veneration, but remediation. So being aware of like indigenous rights and uh, like to, to bring more awareness to causes that matter of like racial injustice and political and social and class injustice and sexism and racism and all those things like that. That remediation is a way that you can work essentially against your history. Cannon, I can't hold you both. You're big boys. I love you with your big blue eyes. Anyway, uh, you don't have to work with those people. As far as I'm aware, my Danish ancestors don't have those large of problems like my father's side does. Uh, so it's a little easier to say, okay, I'll venerate them and remediate my father's side. <sighs> and then you add in extra complicated layers with my family that I'm sure a lot of you have, which is well, what do you do with step family? Are those considered family? Are those considered ancestors? Personally, I say yes, because adoption's a thing. Even though I'm not legally adopted by him, I call him my dad. I consider him my dad. I know his family. I've I've been around his parents and his grandparents and you know any traditions that he could pass down to me he does and would. So why not? Why wouldn't I consider him to be part of my family line and consider his family my ancestors? Just because there's not blood heritage doesn't mean that it's not heritage. Come on, boys. Which means of course I constructed his tree too. <laughs> Um, and it turns out his family is also Norwegian and Swedish, um, and pretty hard German, a lot of German on his side, 
Polish, Ukrainian. There's one person that says Russia, but that could also mean Ukraine because of the timeline that that person was around, because it's like the Russian Empire. Um, and so it's, it's just kind of cool seeing the web of people as they spread out through Europe and confirming, yeah, you're really, really, really white. <laughs> you're English, German, all three Scandinavian mainland Europe countries, uh, Polish, Ukrainian, and Russian. Enjoy your whiteness, kid. Which I already knew. I mean, look at me. Learning about my family tree has been interesting and being able to reconstruct it, and it has been kind of a wild ride. As much as it's never really mattered to me all that much, and it's just nice confirmations on certain stuff that felt right, and the little bits of traditions we did have, it, it's been fun. And I actually discovered that Frankie, I'll cut this if you don't want me to say it. Um, I discovered Frankie and I are like 12 cousins. So that's something. <laughs> uh, we got together one day and I was like, yeah, I've been doing this family tree stuff and it's weird. And I've got like Mayflower ancestors. And they were like, wait, hold on, hold on. In their words, they were all fucking each other. So maybe we're related because there's a, a couple of wreaths in there rather than trees and branches. Uh, and so lo and behold, yeah, we are 12 cousins because we have several common ancestors, like 12 generations back, but like, yeah, that was weird. That was, uh, that was something. So I'm not Italian. I'm not related to the Italian side, uh, which would be like a crazy weird, but it was kind of cool being able to have Frankie be part of this journey. And there were things that they were able to learn about their family that were crazy. I won't get into that cause that's not mine to share, but, uh, it was really cool. I actually tried to record this video like a week ago and then all these revelations came out about uh, a lot of my family and then talking with Frankie about stuff. I've tried to record this and then I had to redo it because I was like, so much has happened. I, I Things have got to change. So like, <laughs> I tried to do this before, had to redo it because shit got wild. Expect the unexpected with this journey, guys. So if you're interested in doing like family tree stuff and heritage stuff, um, it, it's interesting. It can change your perspective on stuff. Maybe it doesn't change anything. Maybe you already know a lot of it, but it, it is nice to be able to see exactly where we're from and places that I could then look into for folklore that may have unintentionally influenced my family in ways that I'm not aware of yet. Who knows? Like I know that we're around uh, Trondheim and Odense in Denmark, like a lot, a lot, a lot in Odense. Um, but it's it's kind of neat to be able to have a starting place and i don't know where it'll go from here i'm really just starting to get into it specifically i started looking into some norwegian folk healing stuff because a lot of the traditions that you're going to find are going to be related to healing uh to like literal doctor type healing like using specific herbs for specific aches pains injuries whatever because a lot of places are really rural and that means that the nearest doctor is miles and miles away and in one of the books I was reading about sometimes they just dismiss your claims entirely like uh, specifically this book about Norwegian folk healing was talking about how rickets was a really common problem that was from essentially a lack of vitamin D and the cures were go outside in the sun and the fresh air and cod liver oil because both of those give you vitamin D and when they would bring their kids to doctors to be like, hey, doctor, treat my kid for rickets, they're like, no, 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 no. Rickets is rare. Your kid doesn't have rickets. And they wouldn't do anything about it. And the kid would die. So folk healers would come in and be like, strap your kid to your back and go outside or leave their carriage out in the, the fresh air and wrap them in blankets if it's cold. Put them outside. Give them cod liver oil. And, you know, there was people trying to say that it was witchcraft or it's not sanctioned by the church, even if they're saying prayers to Jesus. Uh, and that's a whole thing with the Lutheran Reformation. But there, were, there was a need for folk healers because doctors were either inaccessible or ineffective. And the folk healers knew what they were doing because they've been treating these problems for ages. And a lot of that's gonna have to do with that. And then you add on to it, like this herb protects from evil spirits and drives them away and all those properties. And you carry this for uh, protecting from disease and things. So and you may be able to find some of those within the healing books rather than looking for specifically superstitions on their own. I need a Dr. Pepper break. Mm. Now, with all this talk of heritage, and especially for hearing somebody say, I have German and Scandinavian ancestry and talk about heritage, that can be very scary because that can be a giant red flag. It can be innocent. I'd like to think that in my case, it's innocent. It's just, hey, where's my family from? I don't know anything about them. Oh, look, here we are. I wasn't looking for that stuff specifically. It just was there. But in the witchy space, 
talk of heritage can quickly become dangerous because some people use it in a way that is really racist and extremist and super hardcore far right wing. So when you see people talk about their heritage, make sure you're paying attention and go in with a suspicious eye. We shouldn't have to, but we have to, unfortunately. Some people try to use the, your heritage is this, and therefore it's closed to anybody with this heritage. I know a lot of white supremacists try to say that Norse stuff is closed to anybody that is not Scandinavian. If you're not Scandinavian, you don't get to do it, which is a lie. That's a white supremacist myth, number one. Um, but a lot of people really try to say, well, you know, voodoo and hoodoo are closed if you're not black. That's not how it works. So therefore, Norse stuff's closed if you're not white. Also not true. But you'll see it. It even happens with the Greek stuff where people try to say that, oh, I saw this online once, someone tried to say that Apollo is the god of eugenics. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So be really careful who you follow when you're looking into your heritage and seeing the words about heritage and blood and tradition. It gets yikes really fast. And I, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that if you're starting to get into those spaces. Every space has that problem. All of them. The Italian space has it, the Greek space has it, the Norse stuff absolutely has it, the German stuff absolutely has it, English has it. Like, it, it's dangerous. It's really dangerous to tread those waters and go in uninformed, and a lot of people can fall into it because they're really nefarious and they're they're gentle about getting you into it. And they, they start with, yeah, your heritage, very cool, connect with your ancestors, great. And then they just start to sneak in those white supremacist talking points and normalize it to you until you realize, oh shit, I'm like really far into these bad spaces and the way that they're talking, ugh, yikes. So just be careful when you're getting into it. It connects to um, falling down the alt-right pipeline. I made a video about that a long time ago, which is here, I think. Um, just be careful, that's all I wanna say. Now then, uh, within my practice, this has changed a couple of things in, in minor ways. Um, like I said, I'm starting to get into the spirit and ancestor stuff. I haven't set up an ancestor altar yet, but this has been part of that veneration process for me is learning just who they are in general. So step one, figure out who they are, where they're from, what places might be a good area to start at. So I can look at like Odense specifically and Trondheim specifically, and I can get into some specific areas in Germany because I know that the German stuff is really regional specific. So I can start seeing where are my answers from in Germany if I'm interested in the Germanic stuff and what rabbit holes those can lead me down. Uh, so for me, I'm really at the early stages of ancestor veneration, just figuring out who they are at all. And I can look at my father's problematic ancestors and uh, work to remediate some of the things that they were involved in. <sighs> that's its own whole thing. So that is a, that's a complicated process on its own. I learned about my dad's family and that's been really interesting and nice because I knew about some of it. Uh, he has family, we were talking about stuff that he knew about any of his ancestors and a lot of his like great grandparents and great great grandparents, they were uh, builders and architects and things. And so they built a lot of the buildings that are like really old and famous in the town that he's from. So he has ancestors that are directly related to where he grew up and where his family was settled for a long, long time. And it makes a lot of sense where I am that we're so Scandinavian and German because Wisconsin, Minnesota is pretty much all Scandinavian and German for the, the people that came here later. Uh, so, you know, even if there's not traditions that my family did, there's a lot of stuff that's just around here that relates to all of that too. Um, some like heritage museums and stuff. So I might go to those and see what directions I can go. Kind of interesting, kind of neat. Uh, and for people who are in America too, especially like with my father's family having been here so long, another section of this is also the understanding of what land my family has been on and who that land was originally attached to before all the people came here and while they were taking it over and being colonizers. So I'm also gonna leave some links down below to figure out what land you're on and uh, you know some, some resource links to help you guys out with that because I think that's also important to be aware. This land isn't white people land. We didn't start here. We came here and took it from other people. So make sure that you're aware of those things as well. That's part of it if you're working with spirits and especially if you're working with the land, that's gonna be a big part of that history. So stay aware folks. If you have done any of this ancestor work, family tree, history journey yourself, I'd love to have a conversation about it. I think it's really interesting and fun. I'm gonna leave a link to my Discord down in the description because that place is chill, but also hopping with good discussions. So come on over, 
chill with us. We're having a good time and I'll be bringing more videos to you very soon because hey, I'm back in the saddle now. I promise. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time. Um, if you're not already subscribed, you should do that because I'm super cool. And if you're not following me on Instagram, what are you doing? I take cool pictures and stuff. Follow me places. It's rad. Also follow Frankie if you're not because they're also super cool. and I love them with my whole heart. Have a good time. See you guys later. Bless be, etc. I can't encourage drinking Dr. Pepper, but also, this is the elixir of the gods. See you guys.